What's up everyone? Welcome to my second Minecraft tutorial video and this video is going to be about redstone. A lot of people haven't tried redstone yet. They might think it's just too intimidating or they haven't gotten around to it yet but this video should quell some of your fears about redstone. If you watched my last video and you're back for more Minecraft fun, thanks for coming back and if you're a new viewer, always nice to have you. Thanks for coming. The texture pack I'm using is Forgotten Worlds 1.5 and this map file will be in the description along with a link to the download for this texture pack if you like the way it looks. Right now I'm recording on my computer mic, but I'm getting a new microphone in just a couple of days, so my sound quality should increase exponentially, and that will make the videos much more enjoyable. But here we go. We're in the world, and there are two things that you should know about redstone just for a start. The first one is, redstone works on powered blocks, meaning when I pull this lever, the blocks around it are going to become powered, meaning any block next to them is going to receive a redstone signal, and that can cause the blocks around the powered block to become powered as well. So this redstone wiring is touching the blue wool, and when I pull the lever, it turns on. Pretty straightforward. The second quality of redstone you need to know is that when you put a redstone signal into a redstone torch it turns off but it's on by default so it's on I turn on the lever and the output turns off and this is called an inverter which I'll talk about in just a second there are four basic types of circuits in Minecraft and all of these are essential to building any redstone project and these circuits are called logic gates and the first one is an input-output gate. It's exactly what it sounds like. The door is currently closed, and when I pull the lever, the redstone signal turns on and the door opens. The next logic gate is an inverter. The technical name's a not gate, but everyone calls it an inverter. And it uses the property of redstone torches turning off when you put a signal into them. So the iron door is open, and when I pull the lever, the iron door will close. Next up, you've got the AND gate, and you might be able to guess what that does, but the door is currently closed because none of the inputs are on. And when I turn on an input, it turns off these torches one by one, and when both torches are off, it lets the third torch turn on and opens the door. So, the way this works, is when you have both inputs on, the output also turns on. Finally, you've got the NOR gate, which is the exact opposite of the AND gate, and the NOR gate turns everything on when neither of the inputs are on, and when any of the inputs are turned on, this rain is distracting me, and when any of the inputs are turned on, instantly the output turns off. Next up here, we've got carrying a redstone signal upwards using torches. And the way this works is the torch below the other torch through a block powers the block that the other torch is on and continues the signal. It inverts the signal upwards. But since I have two torches, it inverts it and then inverts it again, causing it to stay the same. So this door is right above the lever. I wouldn't be able to do anything with it normally, but when I pull the lever, in this case, it travels upwards, the door opens. All right, next up are pistons. These are my favorite things to do stuff with in Minecraft. You can make traps, staircases extending out of nowhere, light fixtures, and more. You can even make rebuilding houses. There are some videos of those on YouTube. And this is about how pistons work. And there are a plethora of piston powering procedures. In layman's terms, that's a lot of ways to power a piston. I'm going to start out with the normal redstone running to the piston technique. Extremely simple. You can also power a piston through a block. Running redstone on top of a block powers a piston. Running redstone by pistons powers them. That can be good for doing things with the floor. You can also 
to have a torch going upwards to invert the signal to the piston. Here's another ground level inverter for a piston. And finally, you can use repeaters with a piston. And I'll talk about repeaters more in a minute, but they delay the signal and they look a little like this. Now, there are two different types of pistons. The first type of piston is a regular piston. It doesn't require a slime ball to make, but it's not necessarily as useful except for certain things because the block it pushes stays where it gets pushed. In the end. Minecraft physics for the win. Sticky pistons are much more useful. They're usually used in piston contraptions. And what they do, they require a slime ball to craft, but they leave the block that they push on the piston. So I turn it on, it goes up, and it pulls the block back with it when it goes down. That's everything going on. Music. Okay, let's go. Next up are the different stacking methods for pistons. The first one is the one stack, and this is extremely simple. You can see how it's built. It's just a stack of one piston. The next one is slightly more complicated. It involves letting the signal travel up using two torches to continue the signal upwards, and a block on top, which just gives another powered block for the piston to be on and powers the second piston. Now the three stack works the same as the two stack, but it's got a piece of redstone on top of the powered block, which means that that will power the third piston. People use pistons for many different things. They also do things like toilets and sinks which I don't really get because you don't need to do that in Minecraft. All you need is food. But this is just an example of one thing you can do. You can make a waterfall with pistons. And dams are pretty fun to make with pistons. You can do lots of things with them. Finally, redstone repeaters. Now, the normal redstone traveling length along a piece of wire is 15 blocks. And that can be troublesome because you don't get much out of that. Like if I put a piston here, it gets powered, but if I put the piston here, it doesn't get powered because the redstone signal runs out. But what the repeater does, and it can be set to different timings by right clicking, one to four ticks, is it can extend the signal by another 15 blocks. And because of the timing mechanisms of redstone repeaters, they're usually preferred for making clocks in the game, and they can have some really awesome timing effects, including this right here. This is just a little example. That's everything I want to talk about in a redstone basics video. If you enjoyed this video, you can click the thumbs up button, leave a comment on this video, or subscribe to my channel, which I always appreciate. I upload videos regularly, including Minecraft and World of Warcraft videos, and I'm going to be expanding more in the future, so thanks for watching. Oh god, what's happening? Shit.